So don't throw anything, but if you have any questions, I'd be happy to ask, answer them. Hey, Bob, my question just goes to what I was asking Stephen about is, is that what, what do you tell your officials in terms of, uh, uh, we don't see a whole lot of 10-10 of rounds in this sport. Those first two rounds were, were very slow, you know, as I think anybody would, would agree upon. When, when there's very little action like that, what, what do you tell your judges in terms of, does a 10-10 round exist or, or not? You know, I, I, I'm not used to this microphone, so I apologize. Um, yeah, you know, uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 rounds are an anomaly. Um, we have a pre-fight meeting with our judges before every fight. And a matter of fact, this very subject did come up. And the judges in this particular fight were some of the best judges in MMA, Derek Clary, Sal Diamato, and Chris Lee. Um, you should be able, if you're a top-notch A-plus judge, you should be able to discern through the scoring criteria who wins a fight, even if it's ra razor thin. Um, does a 10-10 round come up? Yes, but in the three years that I've been, almost three years I've been the executive director, we have not had a 10-10 had a round. And um, I think it's incumbent upon the uh, judges to you know, be on the top of their game and to be able to, to pick a winner in that round. Because somebody, one effective strike or kick can, de can determine who wins a round. It's kind of the long answer, but. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Hi, Mr. Bennett, how are you? Very good, Ariel. Yourself? I'm good, thanks. Is there a particular reason why you came to the press conference, or are you just here to field questions? No, I, um, out of respect to the promoters, I usually show up at press conferences, and then um, I got a couple of texts, so I thought um, after we just finished conducting our debriefing, I'd come up in the event that anybody had some questions or concerns, and obviously, um, you know, we saw it three, two the other way. So um, just out of respect to the promoters and the fighters, um, we take a lot of pride uh, and in the Nevada State Athletic Commission to ensure that the right fighter wins. We train, we work hard, and uh, it's just out of respect to everybody that, that I come up here on behalf of the commission. We appreciate it. Uh, so I have a question about Alistair Overeem because Dana White said that he was sick and in and out of the hospital. Did either you or your, your medical team have to clear him? Did you know that he was sick leading up to the fight? Yes, I won't specifically comment on his medical condition, but um, it was brought to my attention, uh, I don't know, an hour or two after I arrived at the arena. Uh, we discussed it. There were no violations, and according to the, what's conducted for the WADA, what's on the WADA prohibited list, um, I did have one of my outstanding, and I pardon my modesty, but he is an outstanding doctor, a ringside physician. He did go ahead and um, consult with, um, with the fighter, and he was fit and ready to go, which was evident by his performance tonight. And I just had two other questions. Um, Please. After the weigh-ins yesterday, there was some talk that they were trying to keep Ferguson on the card against Michael Johnson. How would that have worked if we were past the two-hour weigh-in window, 9 to 11 a.m.? How would he have been allowed to compete if a deal was struck? Well, first of all, uh, we like to have all the medicals in his 48 hours before the fight, before the event. However, if, it, if that doesn't work out because somebody has some challenges, we work with the promoter to uh, try and accommodate them. I can tell you on a, on a small, um, this is, I'm digressing a little, but I am answering your question. On a, on a boxing show with a, with a much smaller promoter, we even let a guy weigh in um, to get him on the card so he could fight, and then we had him go see a neurologist with his, with his images and um, to, to make sure we could clear him. Uh, the fact that the weigh-in was over and this was um, a little bit different, we would have made arrangements, which we did. We set up uh, the minute the initial weigh-in was over, um, we, put a, we had a security person on the scale for the weights and measures to make sure nobody played any games with the scale, had them maintain a surveillance log, 
And uh, we were actually going to weigh him in. Let, however, the UFC wanted to uh, actually, if that fight came to fruition, if he would have been in a ceremonial weigh-in, then I either would have weighed him after that with inspectors and then would have invited the press so there was uh, full transparency there, or we would have weighed him in before the ceremonial weigh-in. And that's just out of respect to the sport, the fighter, and um, actually to Ferguson. He trained real hard. Uh, they had an opportunity to put somebody else in, and for whatever reason, you'd have to ask the UFC, that didn't come to fruition. So um, we just try to be uh, customer service oriented. And um, they're a great client, just like many of the other promoters are. And uh, finally, to the best of my knowledge, Nevada hasn't adopted the, the new rules. That's correct. Could you explain why, and do you think that in 2017 that time will come? Yes, that, that will definitely come. That's a decision that is made by the commissioners, um, not by myself, but I have the information to give to them. And it's really based on, to make a long story short, how the state works. So after, the, once the new fiscal year starts, uh, July 1st of 2018, we will have a, uh, it'll take place in a commission meeting and those new rules will be pr provided to the uh, commissioners for them to either rule in favor of them or not, or in part of them or not, to include a down fighter. And just for your edification, before every fight, MMA fight, we let them know that we didn't adopt those rules yet. And in the pre-fight instructions given by the referees, uh, the fighters are aware of that. Bob, just one quick note for clarification, just kind of reading between the lines a little bit. I mean, when you say that, you know, one strike, one punch or kick could be the difference in a round and that a top judge should be able to determine the winner. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but would you say it's your position that you kind of recommend against a judge issuing a 10-10 a, a round? Not at all. Um, and that's a, that's a fair question. I'm glad you asked me. No. These judges, just like in the boxing events, you get a score, you get a score around the way you see it. I don't put any pressure or stress on them. It's totally incumbent upon them. I have something that I use, which is called the pot index, for those of you that are familiar with it. And uh, it, it actually tracks the officials, who's in the majority, who's in the minority, for difficult rounds, for easy rounds. There's some flaws to the system, but if you're familiar with those flaws, then it, it, it is one form of measurement uh, as to who you're better judges are and who have proven themselves under, you know, a lot of pressure. Like tonight's a big, a big time fight for those judges. Don't think for a second that, you know, it's very easy for somebody to say, hey, I saw a 3-2 this way or that way. But you put your butt in that chair for five minutes and when you don't see a lot of action, you, you've got to really always be on top of your game. But it's even more difficult when there's lot less punches being thrown. For instance, it's the last round. Okay, Thompson was up 10-9, you know, with what, 45 seconds left to go? Man, it went the other way. It went 10-9, it went and I'll answer the question before it's asked. The one judge had tatted 10-8, we went over it in the debriefing, and that 10-8 was unacceptable. Not that it would have affected the outcome of the fight, but just to share it with you, uh, we certainly, um, we strive to do the best we can, but you know, we don't always succeed. And that judge should have scored that round 10-9. You can't have a three-point swing in 50 seconds. Or it's certainly, um, I don't even know if anomaly is the right word or just, you know, he just missed it. And usually he's spot on. But thank God it didn't affect the overall outcome of the fight. And in our opinion, which we do for a living, and we don't have a vested interest in who wins or loses, we had Mr. Woodley winning 3-2.